Okay, this is a review and teardown of the Unity UT61C. It's important to make note of the letter C there. There's actually six meters in the range from Unity called 61s uh, A through E. And surprisingly, unlike most North American manufacturers where you might think the letter A might be the least featured unit, the item E, the most featured meter, there's something completely different going on at Unity. Uh, the C, uh, for example, has a backlight feature and a temperature feature, which actually are not available in the E, uh, which is also quite a different meter. It's uh, This is a 6,000 count DMM. The E is a 20,000 count DMM. And even more strangely, if you go down to the letter A, uh, that uh, meter has a field meter to sense uh, the presence of AC, like an electrician would use it for. So, um, even though they're all called UT61s, they actually seem to have some significant differences between them. Okay, so why is this meter interesting? Well, uh, it's uh, obviously an inexpensive Chinese meter. Um, I always review these meters with an eye towards electronics design work. Um, and it's got a bunch of uh, ranges and features which are actually are good for electronics design. Millivolt ranges, a temperature sensor which is actually very useful when doing uh, electronics design. Uh, the ability to measure microamps and milliamps also important. So, uh, I'm not looking for a meter, nor am I reviewing this meter as an electrician's meter. I'm looking at it for a low voltage DC work. And uh, there's the volts range, the millivolt range, the ohms, the hertz, the degree centigrade, microamps, milliamps, amps. So there's a couple of nice things of this meter, actually. It was only $10 more than the V-Shea VC99. Uh, the first thing that's nice is there's a, a backlight. Um, if you've ever had to crawl under the dash of a car to do some wiring, you certainly appreciate things like backlights. You can actually read the meter while you're poking about in dark spaces. That's great. Uh, the other good feature in this one is uh, there's a photo dial back here and there's a little adapter cable that slides in and it connects it to a personal computer. Now it's a serial connector so those are a little trickier to find these days of course most personal computers have moved to USB. Um, you can get an adapter, there's certainly lots of chatter on the internet about the adapters, you have to be careful to select one that actually works. And of course there's some instructions. This basically makes this meter uh, sort of a low-end data Okay, so one thing that really stands out when you start looking down at the barrel jacks, there's obviously the voltage jacks here, and there's uh, the notational text, CAT3, 1000 volts, CAT4, 600 volts. That's all about right for this class of instrument. But then you come over to the ampere jacks, so they're actually only rated down to uh, 250 volts max. And then there's some really curious text that uh, you can only run them at the maximum current for 10 seconds every 15 minutes. I think that's what it means. Let's pop the uh, case open in the meter and see why they've had to put this piece of text on the meter. Okay, so this is uh, one of two fuses that's uh, on the unit. Obviously, one's for the uh, 10 amp range and one's for the um, milliamp and uh, microamp range. Now, uh, they're ceramic fuses, of course, uh, and there's a notation BS1362. Now, if you've ever had the fortune to live in England or anywhere in the United Kingdom, you would quickly recognize that BS1362 stands for British Standard. And uh, if you have to open a plug on a uh, piece of equipment uh, in that country, uh, you would find that uh, the law mandates the use of these fuses. So they're actually quite cheap to use. Um, they're not test and measurement fuses, of course. They're actually uh, ceramic fuses meant for a 240 volt nominal operation, which is, of course, the reason that this meter uh, has such a strange notation on the, the front here. Okay, anytime you buy a meter, you need to make sure it's accurate before you uh, put it into service in your workshop. Uh, by far and away, this is probably the most popular uh, reference standard out there, at least when we look at YouTube videos. Um, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, it's called the DMM check. Uh, you can actually, if you zoom in there, you can read the URL and buy one for yourself. Your own workshop, they're really inexpensive, about $40. And uh, it provides a one precision voltage, one precision current, and uh, three precision resistors. So um, definitely a spot check. Obviously, we're not checking the range of the meter, but. Uh, it certainly is a good sanity check as to uh, the meter and how it performs. So, uh, as always, uh, let's uh, see how it performs. Uh, I'm going to compare it this time to the, the V-Shea BC99 because, quite frankly, there are these two meters are quite comparable in terms of features, and the price range is pretty close. The, the V-Shea is cheaper, but um, let's see how they perform. Okay, so here's a voltage test. I've kind of zoomed in here so we can see the meter a bit more, but basically the voltage source uh, goes to the the uni T and then I put the uh, V shape in parallel. Now you might of course say well these wires here actually could use a small voltage drop. You'd be correct actually and that's something you can verify by flipping the meters around. Now you'll, you'd quickly find out that uh, 
there's not a significant voltage drop, but let's turn them on and uh, get a good sense. It should go to 5.00 volts. Now this is great. This is classic. Um, they don't agree, of course, but both meters are actually well within their calibration limits, so that's great. You can see both of these have uh, voltages down to the millivolt range, which is uh, quite handy. So even though absolute accuracy is never down to the millivolt, if you're doing a, a relative voltage changes, but those are important. And the thing to note, of course, is both uh, meters actually do come with a, a bar graph, and that's uh, quite handy if you're uh, trying to track a slow analog signal. It's hard to decode numbers, and the bar graph can be very helpful for that. So great, voltage is working. Not a surprise, I've yet to tear down a meter from China where the voltages have been inaccurate. Okay, so uh, this test is the uh, the current range. I got both meters on, on the microamp range. Uh, the uh, DMM check produces a, a milliamp. I've got, of course, both meters in series. Now, I did this test uh, also individually just to make sure that one meter doesn't affect the other. Um, but when they're back to back, you can get a, a good sense as to how fast the meters are. So I'll turn it on. And uh, you can see this one goes to uh, 1,004 microamps. This one goes to 999 microamps. Same thing, uh, both were well within their uh, advertised accuracy, so they're, they're, they're both correct. And um, that's great. I mean, uh, so with the microamp range also looks pretty good. We can also switch into milliamps on both meters. You can see you lose a digit, of course, um, and the meters agree. Now, it's kind of interesting, right? This thing says it's 0.99 milliamps, but it's 1,000 microamps, so you see a little difference in the range. This one says it's, um, well, it's tossing between 99 and 1000. So, again, that's something you want to pay attention to when you switch ranges. All of a sudden, you may get a small jump in your measurements. In that. Okay, so this test uh, is basically uh, a test of the um, ohmmeter. There's three very precise resistors on the DMM check, and uh, they should record 111 kilo ohms, or 101.1 kilo ohms, actually. And let's see where the meter comes out to for this one 1.2. Okay, so um, that's good. Uh, that's again within the accuracy they published, 1.11 there, that's exactly the right result. Um, you do see the meter is reasonably slow though actually at uh, recording uh, resistances. Okay, this is a continuity test. Uh, you can see the meter has a little uh, symbol there with uh, the speaker. It obviously makes a beep when there's low resistance and that's of course really helpful when you're trying to trace down a circuit. You can't be looking at the meter and you're just trying to trace something out. Now ideally, it's really fast. You can see, of course, I'm putting the probes together and there's no beep. Now, if I hold it long enough, there is a beep. This is definitely one of the slower meters I've torn down in a while. It's a bit of a surprise to me because I just tore down the UNI-T UT203 clamp meter and it actually had an extremely sensitive uh, continuity test. So, um, by no means is it unusable, but it's, uh, it's slower than I would have hoped. In terms of lead sets, uh, it has a uh, thermocouple, probably a K-type. Mechanically, it uh, doesn't look like the strongest in the world, uh, but uh, there's one provided, and uh, there is a, a lead set as well. It's also fairly basic, uh, just um, what you'd normally would expect for this class of instrument. Okay, and the thermometer just plugs in, or thermal probe, pardon me, it plugs right into the meter and it reads out uh, 22 degrees. That sounds about right. Now, kind of interesting actually, it comes with an adapter here and uh, it has a whole bunch of fittings, um, including what I think is actually a standard K-type thermocouple. So once you plug this in, uh, you can go in and off and uh, use uh, the much more commonly uh, available uh, thermocouple. Uh, this thing also uh, looks like it's useful for testing uh, surface mount transistors. There's, um, there's some pinouts here for through hole transistors and there's surface mount resistors and um, R and C. Okay, so a little surface mount adapter. Actually, that, that's kind of handy. Okay, obviously the meter's opened up and we'll just uh, go through all the pieces. Now you can see these are, of course, the input jacks. There's uh, there's four of them. And uh, more importantly, they don't solder in directly. There's actually a, a piece of wire that comes across. This is actually a, a good practice. What will happen is these meter leads, of course, will come in and out and create actually a fair bit of stress. And what you want to avoid is a, a stress fracture on the PCB, a sort of fracturing. So that's great. Now you can see though that they're open, so basically if you dropped anything into your meter it would keep on going. And the question what happens, so if I look on the back of the, the meter, uh, there is some um, there is some molding uh, so that uh, goes into the recesses. So uh, it's certainly not the strongest I've ever seen, but it's nice to see that they've made some provisions for it. So 
that seems to be sort of the theme of this meter right at the moment. Uh, there's definitely, it definitely looks a lot better than some of the very cheapest meters I've torn down, uh, but it uh, it's not as good as, well, my favorite meter, which unfortunately is the Fluke, which of course is the most expensive choice. But you get what you pay for in life. If we keep on going up, uh, you can start to see some uh, varistors. Basically, uh, uh, these are safety protection devices. They should get, uh, as they get hot, they get more resistive, so you can use a break of the circuit. You can see that there's an attempt here to, to meet standards. Uh, basically, there's something called creepage, uh, creepage clearances. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, Google it. Uh, you'll find all sorts of good things. Basically, if you've got two voltages, uh, the law really gets very concerned that you have enough clearances between those two voltages such that you couldn't create a circuit between them through arcing. So they get, uh, uh, they get into uh, what you have to do for clearances on circuit boards especially. Um, and one really common way of achieving clearances is that you have cutouts, for example, like this, uh, which actually provide an extra layer of protection. Uh, air is a better insulator than uh, PCB material. Now, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why they felt they had to put a circuitry so close to the input, um, but there you go. Uh, coming up, uh, you can see, of course, lots of trimmer pots, uh, very adjustable system. Now, there's no service instructions with this meter, but when you Google the chip that they use on it, you can quickly sort down what these do. So if you uh, want to tweak up your meter even closer to the standard, if you have access to a reference standard, that certainly is something that you can do. Um, Nothing too remarkable here, and then we come up and we'll see the last part of the back side of the board. This is the continuity beeper. It was nice and uh, nice and loud. Okay, I was expecting two LEDs, actually. I can see there's only one, so this is a, a transmit only. Uh, the, the actual uh, cutout for the communications protocol is, uh, pardon me, it's on the back of this one here. Um, you can see that they've got a standard. Now, I've got a, a Uni-T81, actually, and it uses the exact same uh, connectorization, so they're just dual-purposing it. That's good. In, Good engineering and good business. Uh, you can see there's a, there's two uh, clear cutouts, but they only have one LED. That means this is probably a, a transmit only meter, and that's fine for day vlogging. You don't, uh, don't need to uh, control the meter necessarily. And last little pieces there's a, a crystal. Um, it's marked oscillator, but there's no way it's an oscillator, it's actually a crystal. And uh, that, of course, will be driving the microprocessor, which is buried inside, which will be probably the single sided single chip IC, and then some more uh, electrolytic capacitors. Only other item of note um, is that uh, there's some hand soldering. Uh, you can see in here. Let me just see if I can zoom into that. So there's one thing a little bit discouraging to see. Uh, it's uh, hand soldering. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of hand soldering on the product. Now, uh, the problem with hand soldering is, of course, you're introducing the variable of uh, a human hand to put solder down, put down correctly. And uh, that's really hard to control. So uh, generally when you're manufacturing products, you try to keep people out of the equation as much as possible. You get better consistency that way. Um, and the other thing that's uh, also a little discouraging, I think there's a little bit of solder splashing in some of the contacts. The problem is that when you splash solder and it gets just stuck there by the flux you've left onto it, those little slivers sometimes can break free. And of course, take your product from completely functional to, uh, to unfortunately not usable. So um, that's unfortunate. Uh, otherwise, the the assembly quality is good on this one. Actually, it's it's mating, it's matching up very nicely with the um, the Unity's uh, 203 clamp meter I tore down. That one also was showing some really good quality. So uh, that's promise. So here's the back. Uh, you can see, of course, the barrel jacks protruding through. Uh, selector switch here. It looks like it's nickel plated, not gold plated. That's um, a long term reliability problem. Obviously, as the selector switch spins around, it sets up different contacts and it tells the uh, measurement IC uh, what mode it should be in. If the gold plate will last longer, nickel obviously has a shorter life, uh, but obviously a uh, cost savings move. Uh, display, I'm sure it'll be a, a zebra stripe and probably some conductive rubber. Yeah, sure. This is uh, the zebra stripe here, which contacts. No surprise. Okay, looks like. Um, Single measurement I see, uh, FS9922, uh, Fortune I see, I recall, uh, makes uh, this particular one. Um, classic single uh, I see uh, multimeter design. And in fact, that I see is different than I believe what they use on the 61E, so even more of the confirmation, those are really radically different products. And otherwise, on this side, not too much that's remarkable, just some more uh, precision resistors, some LEDs, the contacts for the various uh, functions. And um, that's about it. 
Okay, Fortune Semi, that seemed familiar to me, so I reopened up the uh, Vichy VC99, and of course it's the exact same integrated circuit. So, it is really valid to actually compare these two, uh, two meters, because they're essentially built around the exact same uh, integrated circuit. And that so this is the uh, the shell of the uh, Uni-T. Uh, unlike a fluke, the uh, the red here isn't uh, like a plastic cover that you can peel off, it's actually two pieces of injection molded plastic. Uh, the only other thing of note is actually there's a pretty deep groove here, so when the case mute, uh, mates together, uh, it's a fairly significant uh, overlap, and I believe that's actually for debris ejection should uh, a fault occur inside the meter. Uh, you try to keep everything inside the meter, so I think that actually speaks well of their case design. Okay, that's the Uni-T UT-61C.